Hello and welcome to another episode of ASMR in the best possible timeline. Super excited about today's episode. It is going to be a whisper, no, a soft-spoken ramble between me and my good friend Dan here. And we are going to talk about movies, the Oscars, and all things Cinephilia. So without further ado, I bring you Dan. Would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah. Uh, thanks for having me on here today. I, uh, a little bit about me is that I'm an actor. I've been acting since fourth grade. Uh, I also co-founded a film studio here in Austin, um, where we so far just primarily uh, short films. Um, we're currently right now uh, promoting a film called Who Invited the Robots, which is currently in the film festival circuit uh so in a city near you yeah and who invited the robots this is super fun watching you've actually won some awards for it right yep i uh actually i had several as far as not just for myself but on the acting side but um we've had uh actually uh, one of the actresses juliet cabell she's won actually three times and then we've also won Best Ensemble Cast. Um, so, and then we've also won Best Dark Comedy. Uh, so it kind of gets the idea that it is a comedy, um, but yeah, you know, uh, it has a little bit of sci-fi as well. So, and it's really something that I'm really passionate about, more so just because of just the film making in general and acting. Um, the film itself though, just kind of imagine as a you know, when you're de- dating your partner, you know, for the first few months, and then your partner wants you to meet their friends. And so in this situation, Adam meets his girlfriend, Dolores, friends who are not exactly normal, to say the least. <laughs> right. So that's kind of, uh, yeah, that's kind of the gist of the story. Yeah, it's a fun watch. Maybe if, is there a public link I can share and I can put it below? Awesome. That would be amazing. Wonderful. All right. Well, link below. So without further ado, who do you think should win Best Picture? Honestly, last year was probably one of the best, one of the best years in cinema. Um, There's so many great films. And it's kind of interesting, and I I know we talked a little bit about this, but as you look back at a lot of great years, 1999 being one of the big years as far as so many classics um, from all for all genres, and I feel like 2023 was really up there, and even with the strikes and everything, you know, we were as film goers and everything, we had so many great choices. Uh, but just even ones that weren't nominated, um, a lot of them are snubs. And as far as like looking at today or this, you know, for this Sunday's uh, Oscars and nominations, honestly, you know, everyone was talking about Oppenheimer and Barbie, you know, the Barbenheimer and everything that was going on. And again, most likely Oppenheimer will probably win. I'm not against it. I think it's a fantastic film. Killian Murphy is probably one of my favorite actors. He's probably someone I model a lot of the acting styles that he that he uses and everything. And um and a great cast. Robert Downey Jr. is fantastic. Even Yvette's favorite, Josh Hartnett, is in the in the film. And, I didn't know he was in the film until you pointed it out. I was like, well, how can you not miss Josh Hartnett? He's like, I love Killian Murphy. <laughs> he was really in all the way, yeah, for sure. Oh yeah. and, and I, and I, good job, though. I didn't even know that that was him. He is, he is completely unrecognizable. Like, compare it to, like, Wicker Park and how he looked in there where he had the dark emo look with the long hair and also, like, in Oppenheimer, he's got the nice, like, Sit back and he's kind of a little chubby, but I guess you know, he's an older feller now, so <laughs> but um, so do yeah. you feel like Oppenheimer does 
deserves to win? Because the question was, who do you think should win? Honestly, to me, it's kind of interesting too. I, I, I really like poor things. I think that's I. That's my favorite. I should keep that picture because. I really I watched think. the first 10 minutes and I had to turn it off. It was so disturbing. Oh, uh, poor things? You, you had to turn it off? I did. When she was like stabbing the person in the face, I was like, and this is not the movie I thought it was going to be. And I, I was like, okay, this is not a nighttime movie because I was watching it before bed. And I was like, this is a much earlier in the day. Yeah, you got to be awake. But it's. Maybe. It's so good, though, as far as, like, the dialogue. And I feel like the message, especially to you, was, um, you know, again, I can't really say too much because I have to be a man, but I feel like when she is kind of going through this, what men are trying to tell her what to be and who she is and who she should be with, and she's kind of going through this life as, far as on her own and just kind of living on a whim while these men keep trying to control her and tell her to get bothered and, and uh, Mark, uh, Mark Ruffalo's character and everything else and it's kind of interesting seeing the this kind of journey or adventure that she goes on and I, I'm a huge uh, fan of the director Yorgos uh, Lanthimos and I think he does a fantastic job in the film <laughs> a filmmaking and everything and um yeah, I just, and of course, Emma is just such a fantastic actress, and she does such a great job playing, starting as a baby, and then, because she has a kid, and they get baby Bryce, and then, kind of, as she goes through, like, life and everything, kind of reliving life again, um, it's really, I think, it's just the, the dialogue, the writing, I feel like it's got everything, but, the other one, actually, too, I really enjoyed his past lives. I think that's another what I loved about that yeah. film. It's, You're telling me about that. Mm -hmm. It's such a better than Oppenheimer. Yeah. I, Did you not love Oppenheimer? I loved oh, I love, Oppenheimer. I loved it. Time. I loved it. I mean, it was fantastic. I, mean, it was, I thought it was perfect. I thought it was a perfect film. I I did, and I. And especially too, I I found that part of history so interesting, and especially too with Oppenheimer and what he had to having that on his shoulders, it, it, for someone to take that on, that's unimaginable. Like it, it's almost like saying at this point, you have to save the world, you have to do. Like you, if you don't do this, we're screwed. Save the world, but do so in a way that plants the seed of her own yeah, destruction. Yeah, which that's yeah, yeah. and uh, and especially him as a human being, he's not some you know he doesn't search out. He doesn't have an. He's not a major egotistical arrogant. Like he he's a person that has kind of a good idea. Like he has a uh, say as far as very good awareness and the impact and everything they're trying to you know create do this balance and honestly i don't think there's anyone else that could really say they did that or they had to have that on their shoulders and then all of a sudden it was this is a sexy picture yeah he was so dreamy oh um, there's no doubt about that it is there's there's no doubt and i think i think for but at the same time, I love originality. And don't get me wrong, this is a great film in the sense of like the focus with it being on Oppenheimer. But I found that the original films is kind of what I kind of lean towards. And like the ones like Poor Things, Past Lives, I love about sort of the kind of going into the realm of um, well, a couple of things. It's like, you know, it's a romance movie, but it's not. And and I like how it touches on the whole, like, not so much like the what if, but a series of, like, two people's paths, sort of how they meet when they were kids, and then how it breaks apart. 
and how one tries to find the other. And they're always not making the right timing. It's always when one meets each other, it's always like, well, this is not a good time. I'm in New York. I'm in Korea. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Very relatable. Right. And, and so then it goes on another, you know, 10, 12 years. And then there's, I guess, another moment. But this time, you know, she's got other things going on. And he mm-hmm. goes out there to see her. Because that was always her problem with him. Because he wouldn't come out. Mm-hmm. Where she's like, you know, I don't want to give it away, but it's very beautifully shot. Great job as far as realizing um, New York City. And you know, it, uh, East Village, I guess, is what they use a lot primarily, but really good stuff. That's like an interesting motif that's happening in movies right now. I think Past Lives probably does it best, but I've seen a lot of rom coms lately. David McCovney is in that one with Meg Ryan coming up. Have you seen that? Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's out yet, um, but they were together, they separated, then they see each other, they like get trapped in the airport together, and there's other examples of that, and mm-hmm. I think that that might be a motif happening like in our generation or around us, and that's why it keeps getting put into movies in a way that I've never seen before. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think, especially too, like what Past Lives touches on is it touches on a little bit of like coincidence. Is it really coincidence when you meet someone, or is it is there a reason? There's a purpose, and then they t- they do. There's a a saying called uh, that they use in the end that kind of touches on that. But it's a Korean saying and um, talks about when when you meet people, they they don't believe in coincidence. It's not. It's any everyone they meet. Yeah, yeah. It's very much like. When you meet someone or you talk to someone, there's a reason. And I think that's really interesting that you touch on that as far as or like that's kind of a part of the the theme of the movie and everything. And it's interesting too because I really liked I don't mean to get this go wrong with you, but I really liked her American husband because what could have turned into the prototypical rom com is if and it's funny because he makes a joke about it. He's like, you know, it's, this is kind of a funny story or an interesting story if you think about it. Because he's a writer. And he tells her, he says, mm. I can, he goes, you meet your you know, your childhood crush and I'm that mean American husband that's going to ruin things and try to ruffle the feathers. And I think it was so funny, but it was actually obvious. He, <laughs> he, he understood. That I can't be like I can't do that. I can't get it between mm-hmm. her and me. Like I I can only trust her. And I really liked that as far as kind of changing as far as that as far as he could have, you know, been that character, he mm-hmm. could have been that. But instead he just trusted her. And even too, like there's a really good scene where they all like meet up for drinks and it was a really good conversation. And it's interesting because he tells her, my fear, the only thing I fear is that I don't understand because he has been learning Korean, he goes, but if you guys start talking Korean and I don't understand, that's where I might get, you know, a little bit fearful, maybe a little bit jealous. And at one point, they just start talking, her and the, the, her childhood crush. But the thing is, what was great, that he did, the husband didn't get upset. And there's a really mm-hmm. good moment where the, the Korean guy tells him, he's like, I'm sorry that we started talking in Korean. And he tells him, he's like, it's okay. I, I'm glad you came. I'm glad you mm-hmm. met. And that's it. And it's such a great moment. And it's kind of, and so he could have been, you know, this angry man. You know, whatever, but I just kind of how things played out and the characters is just very well done. That was super cool. I am worried about the sound. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. I think, I don't know. 
I think the sound was coming out of there and in here at the same time. So we'll see how that ends up working. This is a learning opportunity Yay. in the best possible kind. <laughs> um, so as someone who watched the film, who did you want the, to end up, who, who did you want to get the girl? Honestly, I think I wanted the American husband. Um, and I don't want to give it away, but um, and it's interesting when you when you see this interaction between her and her childhood crush, you can kind of see it like okay, because normally a thing you know that ends up in like the crush or the you know, the former lover, and, um, but it's interesting it's like when you see it, you're like okay, I can see why. What she may, who she ends up choosing, but it's, I don't want to give away what happened. Not so much as far as like who mm -hmm. she chooses, but her reaction. It's sort of a little bit like, oh, I didn't expect her reaction. Like, even though she makes a choice, she has a reaction that you kind of, but at the same time, it's understandable why she chose and she's not easy, so to speak. And, yeah. Well, it sounds like a good movie. As someone who's still in love with their childhood crush, I can't wait to see it. So there you go. I'm him. I'm the there guy. Go. <laughs> there you go. There we go. There you go. Great, great, relatable movie for you. Very relatable. Uh, there's a video on my best possible Patreon all about that guy. And... <laughs> The lack of closed loops, you know, it's just that uh, mm -hmm. it's almost like an S or something. I would just think it's just like, ooh, almost, are we? No. <laughs> Can you go back? Nope. Let's go this way. <laughs> so. Yeah, so that's fun. Um, I'm still highly concerned about the sound, how that's going to end up. So I hope this ends up being usable. Who do you think should win Best Actor? Oh, Killian Murphy, without a doubt, for sure. There is no doubt that he did a phenomenal job. Uh, don't get me wrong, Paul Giamatti was fantastic in The Holdovers. Um, as always, I'm a huge Paul Giamatti fan. Um, and especially if you I heard great things, he's such a nice guy. He always loves working with up-and-coming actors. Uh, just because he kind of has a background where he just kind of fell into acting when he was in college and he just loved it and it just kind of happened. He never like wasn't like a childhood star or anything. He just fell into it and then he just kept going at it. And um, I'm killing my free bar for sure. He's just such a fantastic actor. Um, overall, I think he um, just how he played that role, the mannerisms, the, the posture of Oppenheimer, everything was just spot on. Like you can't, I love he was yeah, phenomenal. like attention to detail that he, he put in to that character. It's just amazing. Like I said, there's no doubt he 100% deserves it. <laughs> it's long overdue. I mean, Kelly Murphy. She's going back to 28 Days Later, my first one. And I completely, like, was just in awe in how he, how he is. And, and it's interesting, him as a person, he's such a chill guy. And when he's, like, doing interviews, I could tell he's not a fan of interviews. But at the same time, he's always just relaxed. Always just chill. And it's Oh, mm -hmm. Kelly Murphy? Kelly Murphy, yeah. Just always. Yeah, so not a fan. He's yeah. interviews, oh, yeah. you can tell. But he, he kind of keeps it, <laughs> keeps it down. As far as his hatred towards interviews. But, um, but he's fantastic. I just, the way he is. Like, I mean, he's done support roles. Fantastic. I mean, he can do you know, a support role. He can do a main role. He can do any type, and he's so good at both. And especially if you're, of course, one of my favorite shows, 
of all time, P.T. Blythe, it's such a great album, or such a great show, it's so good. Like him, Tom Hardy. I never watched that. So good. So good. Oh, yeah, wonderful thing. What about uh, Best Actress? So, honestly, I still think it's Emma Stone, just because I, I love um, Poor Things. It's such a great uh, influence. She does a fantastic job. And honestly, the way she does the, the facial effects, I pay attention a lot. I love actors that can really show that raw emotion, that raw, like, kind of like being in the moment. So it's one of those things, it's sort of in acting, a lot of times, actors sometimes get into this mode where it's like, I just got to finish this. I just got to say these lines. And, but the most difficult, what they forget a lot of times is being in the moment, just being in that, just like in, in the full character. And Emma Stone does such a fantastic job. She, you could tell a lot of times, like when I watch movies, I can see an actor already planning to the end of set. Like they're just wanting to keep going. Just how they kind of look, it's just a weird look. But when, when uh, an actor is in the moment, like everything is kind of centralized. And just Emma Stone, for that character, it's just, and it shows that transformation too, because we talked about this character transformation kind of going through those, pro, uh, you know, the changes mm -hmm. and everything, and that, that character especially is so much transformation from start to finish. And she does that such a good job, and just kind of keeping in center the whole, the whole time. And so, versus the other actors, it wasn't like, I mean, Margot is good, obviously, as far as, but I wasn't, um, I don't know, I'm not, not compared to Emma Stone, it's not the same, or I should say not Mar. sorry, not Margot, but uh, was it uh, your favorite movie, Maestro? I couldn't, I couldn't, I don't know, it was just boring, it was too slow. <laughs> I just didn't care. It was like 20 minutes and I was like, I don't care. I was like, it's too young for it then. What was the enticing incident in Maestro? As far as like, in the enticing moment, what do you mean? That's the moment that starts the story. It should happen in a movie. It's supposed to happen as soon as it's close to the opening scene as mm -hmm. possible. The thing that like puts it into motion, and without this, the whole rest of the movie cannot exist. Um, you have to wait like twenty minutes, twenty five minutes before it to actually kick in, because it. I didn't make it. What the fuck were they thinking? <laughs> That's not how you write yeah. a movie. Because sometimes, sometimes they do that mm -hmm. in TV, and when they do that in TV, I'm like, and you lost me. Um, I'm out. <laughs> Out, give me that moment, start the fucking story. I don't, you can fill me in on the background after that moment. Like, it was just, it was too much exposition. It was just, yeah, it, it's funny. I remember someone made a comment, they called it a vanity show, <laughs> Bradley Cooper's vanity show. And yeah, that's <laughs> not to take anything away from him. I mean, I, I just don't think that. I will say Carrie Mulligan does a fantastic job, as she always does. She's a great actress. It just the story, just it, it was hard. The writing, the writing. It was just kind of it was it a little bit writing. all over the place, and there was no story. It was just kind of like these moments in his life happening, but at the same time, it, and that can mm -hmm. be a story if you right. pace it right. And also too. Like, you just watch normal people. I think normal people does a good right. job. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And I think where you should also give the audience to care. And I didn't care about Bradley Cooper's character. I honestly, I. I cared before I right. started the movie. I totally yeah. cared. <laughs> I was like, 
Leonard Bernstein. This yeah. is going to be interesting. And then I was Time like, to find out. 20 minutes in, he's right. just a cheater. And I don't care because I'm not attached to his exactly. boyfriend either. He, I just am uh, not was, invested. And then on top of that, he has kids with her. And then he won't tell them the truth. And he just keeps doing it. And he doesn't understand why she's upset with him. And he's like, I thought I told you. And she's like, no, you didn't. And then that's it. He was like, oh, okay. Like, I feel like that was only nominated because it's Leonard. It's about Leonard Bernstein. That's the only reason. And I, I, honestly, I'm sorry. Let's come, you know, like when I think of, and again, originality and thinking of another great film that is, you know, I'm surprised it's gotten some now that I got nominated, but it's of the interest. And it's, it's especially too where it puts a focus on the Nazi family and their thinking and how they, you know, not so much of what's going on in the concentration camps, but on the outside and their everyday life. Mm -hmm. And especially too, they always, they always felt entitled. Like, I'm German. I deserve this. I deserve this my house. Whoever lived here, like, and it's kind of, it's so green. And then where a lot of the conversation would be like, if you were just sitting in a park, you could hear everyday conversations, and that's what it'd be like. But the director and their sound design did such a great job like capturing that distant sound and kind of including it in the moment. So when someone's talking about oh how beautiful the flowers are, you can hear someone screaming in the distance. And you can hear gunshots. And the oh, no. the scene that really hit me the most is to me it's what I think is is beautiful but also disturbing and scary is the because uh, the house was located on the outside of Auschwitz. At night they would everything would be silent. And so you have this family and this they had kids. And you're in this in the son bedroom and all of a sudden you see this red light kind of peering through the window. Like red just this red color. And it's a beautiful shot because they it's the kid gets up and sees it and he walks towards the window in a way it's framed. But when he opens, pulls the window, and he's just kind of staring out. And then the next like cut, you then see that he's in this kind of full view and it's steam coming out of one of the, the chimneys, basically is. So it, 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 it's like, and it's, it's interesting because he doesn't really use music. It just lets the silence kind of let it, let it sit oh, on it. Wow. And you'll just see on this chimney, just, and it's just red fire smoke just coming out. It's crazy. Oh, that sounds like a great so film. It's a great film. But, um, sorry, I was, was going to talk about Stub. Um, but you know, it's like you know, with Maestro and how it just uh, fell short. And again, it was just for the sake of Leonard Bernstein. But you talked about Saltburn, and it's such such a such a great film. Um, I know a lot of people probably have heard all of the things. It's just crazy, but it's so good. Uh, it's such a well acted film with Gary Killian and uh, Jacob Elordi. And uh, fantastic directing by uh, Emerald uh, Fernal, who's amazing. Uh, if you guys haven't seen Killing Eve, highly recommend it. It's such a great show. Uh, great okay. dark comedy. I mean, it is dark kind of thing, but it's so good. Anyways, um, but the same. Okay, so question, because my favorite thing about Saltburn is the directing. So who do you think should win Best Director? Jonathan Glazer for Zone of Interest. Zone of Interest. For 
such a beautiful film. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm a huge Nolan fan. I've been a fan of it since I first saw Memento and uh, in theaters. And I think he's just such a brilliant director in every film that he makes. Um, and I mean, if he wins it, that would be amazing. Um, but I will say, as far as Jonathan Glazer, so good on framing, framing the shots and letting that kind of create that environment and create that, especially to talking about someone of interest, let's disturb that feeling and it's without, you know, mm-hmm. playing music or, you know, or, or, or the scene. There's no music. There's a the song at the beginning and then there's some at the end. That's it. Wow. Mm-hmm. How unique. It's really cool. How bold he's, move. He's a really good director. He's a really good director. He he is known for uh, making some of the amazing Radiohead music videos in the 90s. That's where he got started. So, there you go. Oh, I haven't seen that, so we're still just talking. So, yeah, so I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, we don't have a lot to talk about the, those scenes of uh, uh, Disturb Too Many People. But it's such a great film because... <laughs> it's such a disturbing movie. I've nightmares <laughs> for two days. Just, yeah, it's, a, it's really such good. a great film to talk about afterwards, too, because... The characters, especially to Barry Keoghan's character, he has these, his thinking is, is twisted, but he has his means, like, and I know we talked about earlier, like, a character to care about, but, but you also need to have a character that you hate, which is a, to, to understand them. I no, and that's a, and that's a good thing. You need to have that, like, Right, it's a, and that's the thing. He does a, such a great job of playing that a character that you hate, and the things that he does, and his obsession for his friend, and the things that he would do, and the thing that his friend was so compassionate, so empathetic. <laughs> it was, it was almost like interesting to see that kind of on the reverse because you're always used to the main character and you want to feel bad and care like the main character you want to hate and and I love that I love I love where you can kind of get I don't want to say confuse the audience but you can change it up on them don't let them it's like that's what I did with it uh, with who invited robots is like the character of Adam I wrote him to be a douche. I wanted, I didn't I wanted audiences to be conflicted to where they'd be like, I sort of relate to him, but he's a douche. And I love that. I love kind of creating that kind of. Wait, which one was that? Was that the guy in the cook or the other guy who's very cool? Oh, my or film or? No, yeah, it was my character. Yeah. Oh, so, your character. So, I love, okay. Yeah. Yeah, the human. Yeah, um, yeah. So I, I think that's so great to create that conflict for the audience, not to give them that, you know, that prototypical like expectation. Like it's good to kind of let them see it, but, and that's why I, like for Emerald and the the writing that she did and everything was so good, and the story and everything, the characters. There were some holes, and I think that's maybe what. I don't know, didn't get it right in the book, but honestly, it's the character. What do you think <laughs> were the holes? What, what could have filled if you were a scripty? How would you have filled the ending, holes? You know, the after the events of her, of his friend, I think they could have done a better job to explain. <laughs> that was weird when the mom was just yeah. like, and now she's not, she's dying. And, and, it's like, and then the dad. <laughs> Decompose. I don't know. Like what? And then, and then. Oh yeah. He was just biding his time. He was just. Yeah. He's like one day, this wife and man will pass. Right. Exactly. Be right there. Yeah. And, and then they. 
and then she'll be lonely and she'll invite me. Like that was, that was right. a little everything just worked out. Like, I don't like how does that like that doesn't like especially too after you went through all of that after all of, you know doing all of this like you, you know pull, pulling the strings on his friend's sister and then pulling the strings on the mom and then trying to pull strings on your friend's best friend other friend who figured you out that's the other part <laughs> but then he did like pull the strings for a moment because like moment in the bed and you were like get this guy off of you like why does he think i'm incapable of <laughs> resisting this yeah. man like He's just good at pandering, I guess. Yeah. He's like, oh, here's what you want. And the guy's like, oh, this is what I want. Hello. I hate I'll you, but go it. on. Uh, so, so, yeah, that, I think those were the only, I think that was kind of like the biggest thing that, to me, that kind of stood out as far as I'm like, oh, if, you, if you explain this better, because there's no way it was just that convenient. It was just better. You had uh, the mom wasn't the brightest bulb, but she just didn't care. She she was smart, but she just didn't care. She just kind of she was a little bit nonchalant about things, but she wasn't like a a dum dum or something like that. Like I don't know. It was kind of that was kind of yeah. That was my my only great take of film so to speak but yeah yeah no i think um trying to think as far as some other really good films of course it's based this is a little biased but other great films that should have been nominated is godzilla minus one <laughs> that's a good, that's a great for what that's a, there's just what Best would film. it have been nominated for? <laughs> That's just like, I'm a huge Godzilla fan, so that is really biased. So biased. I know. So many ways. <laughs> um, but it's such a good film. Like, this, it actually had such a great, heartwarming story. But then also, too, making Godzilla like a true nightmarish monster. Like an actual, like a boogeyman. Almost. And I love that take. So completely different the story versus saying you know you have monster Godzilla attacks this city. Oh no, we're sending all their monsters to face off in this movie. Um, but with this, it's you know you have one you have what was the reconstruction of Japan after uh, the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bomb, and the uh, and we get some good parts. We get some good pieces of information, um, especially to where they were under sanction, so they couldn't, no military anymore, they had to blow up all their ships, or strip them down, they had to blow up all the sea mines that were planted around the country, so, <clears throat> and then also too, the soldiers that came back, who were part of the kamikaze, uh, group, they um, when they came back, they were re they were rejected. People of Japan hated them because they were disappointed. They were supposed to sacrifice themselves, and this guy didn't. So mm. he was trying to get his you know reputation back. And um, I mean, he's pretty depressed. He loses his parents and everything. So he literally clouds here. Like everyone hates him. And he's But he meets a girl, and it's, you know, <laughs> not, but God, oh my God, that's so cool. So, so but. Okay, I don't know about you, but my microphone in plus streaming, I think, is like eating oh. my battery. So, I kind of have to wrap this up <laughs> 10 minutes. in the next 10 minutes or so. Hey. Because otherwise. I don't know how much longer my battery is going to last. It usually lasts way longer than this. I think it's the combination. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, 
So what, who do you think should win then? I mean, anthology. I haven't seen the rest of the films, so I loved Oppenheimer. I thought it was a perfect film. I like Barbie. I was like, mm, hole here, hole there, not perfect. It was good. It was great. It was giving voice of a, of a gender, and I really appreciated it. But it just missed the mark. It wasn't an A plus experience for me. Whereas Oppenheimer was like A plus. I just yeah. thought it was perfect. As long as it was, I so, watched it three so times. Did it though. It, that's one of those that's so worth it. I will say on the polar opposite, that is super long but terrible. Uh, Killers of the Flower Moon, which is an awful movie. I know, you complain about that. You can't get four oh, hours back. I kid you not. It's three hours and 46 minutes. You can't get that. <laughs> and and it's, it's Warren Scorsese's worst that. project. Man, he's got some talent. Have you seen, oh, what is the name of that movie? Alice? Alice's Restaurant? Or, so, or no, no, no. Um, from the lady being, uh, she yeah, doesn't yeah, live yeah, here yeah. anymore. That is a bad That's one. A bad that is a bad. He does have some bad ones, actually. I forgot. <laughs> He's got a lot of bad ones. This one takes the cake just because it's so long. And <laughs> it's like, I don't even know. Like, Irishman was okay. I think the only reason. I liked I like it because it was Joe Irishman. Pesci <laughs> was back. It was good to see him in the acting. I like all those guys. Yeah, He's but like it, guys in a movie. I'm it, in. it was okay. I, I wasn't. Yeah, but Killers of the yeah, Flower Moon, right. like I get, you know, I'm glad it's calling attention for uh, the Native Americans and everything. And that was cool. Like uh, Lily Gladstone, I'm glad she got nominated. Definitely deserve it, but I just, I think there was so much that they could have been done that they could have, or I should say, they could have done more about that. I felt like, Leonard DiCaprio's mm. character, I didn't care for it. I kind of felt like he was a bumbling idiot. Like he really, I don't know if it was done on purpose, but I just, I just didn't care about him. Again, going back to not creating that connection, you know, either you hate the character or you care about the character. You just, yeah, you feel something. And I, I just didn't. And yet, I'm, you know, he's the main character. It's just kind of, it's difficult to do that, and especially if you're going to make a three and a half hour long film, I mean, this has got to be a major character. I mean, like we talked about with Killian Murphy playing Oppenheimer, mm -hmm. it was enticing. The way he portrayed that character was on point. You wanted to see, you wanted to see it. You can, you can enjoy a three and a half hour yeah. film because it's such a great performance. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the writing was good, the storytelling, everything oh, about so Oppenheimer was, was so good. delicious. And then the, the, yeah, it's so good. And yeah. I, and again, and I, I think there was, again, it was such a great year in film because, like I told you, like a lot of the ones that were nominated were, were fantastic. Even too, I, again, I touched on Paul Giamatti, but the holdovers is, is a great film. It, it reminds me of a lot of, it reminds me. Say so there's a couple of things, especially too with that director and the writer and Paul Giamatti. It really, um, it's interesting because it's such a character movie, and Giamatti does such a fantastic job. But it's such a great film in the sense of pushing yourself to do more, and and then even if if or find your way to be impactful too. And I think it's interesting where you kind of come from that. Um, as him as being this old, you know, it's, it's kind of like the typical, like, old, you know, uh, he's a cranky uh, professor guy, you know, at a college or something, and, you know, he's cranky and he doesn't like the, the kids because it's, the, you know, the young generation doesn't, under, no, it's, it's more than that. And I think it's interesting what you find out about Giamatti's character and where he comes from. Um, the the student that he's having to watch over. I liked it. It's good. It's a good character film. Um, it's a great film. You know, and that's such a, such a great film. And I and you. Did you see the Hidden I, Sugar I did. movie? I did. Uh, yeah. 
feel feel good. But it's okay. That's fair. I again, I'm a huge. I do. I think Wes Anderson is a fantastic director. I love. I always love. No, but yeah, that was the thing that it wasn't my favorite. That's for sure. I I wouldn't say. I, I'm surprised it got nominated for best short film, but then again, it's Wes Anderson. People they love them. Critics love them. Right. Oh uh, yeah. yeah, Bert, yeah. He's he's a great actor. I he's love him. Actor. So, actor. but yeah, it was okay. It wasn't. Yeah. But but yeah, there was. I mean, again, there was. Uh, there's yeah, there was just a lot of great films that was I sure at least that I enjoyed um, overall and everything. And it's a it's a top up. I'm really excited about actually it's one of those few Oscars where I'm where I'm actually really excited about it. Uh, and probably will actually I, I mean I always watch it, but this year I'm actually gonna pay attention instead of just having it on in the background. <laughs> like I do. I've never been in the room with the well, because I've been in the room. I've never watched. Oh, really? any well, usually, watch. yeah, it's just it's a nice thing to have on the background. Like I'll just like um either reading something or writing something, and I just sit there or just like to hear who is the winner and everything. I do like a good Oscar party though, because I uh used to, those I love like yeah, to be able to parties. You know, do the take a guess who's gonna win and everything and those are a lot of fun. I haven't been those in a while, but mm-hmm. I love I I used to throw those in college just because that was one of my favorite things to do and people dress up and whatnot. So no fun. <laughs> do your own red carpet. <laughs> so cool. Uh but yeah, no, I I think uh but yeah, I think it's gonna be really exciting and uh we should have a chat about who wins and if they if should they be the true winners. Yeah. And I'm sure I should mm-hmm. say though, Godzilla did get nominated, which is the first time ever in the existence of the Godzilla franchise, which is I think seventy years. Oh. Seventy years of Godzilla been on T V on oh, yeah. the theater screen. For the first time. Yes. Congratulations, so Godzilla. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Those Godzilla fans are so ready to get so ready. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, that's awesome. Thank you so much for coming and regaling us with all of your movie knowledge. Totally appreciate all of it. Super fun, interesting. Can't wait to thank see you as well. Ends up thank playing. you for having me back. Always, no, no. as always, always uh, enjoy the be able to talk to talk about movies and everything. Yeah, my favorite. Well, thank you yes, again, and uh, until next time. Yeah, we're talking about the Oscar wins. Thanks.